Hi, this is Mike Shaheen with HHO Connection. This is the first video in a short series that I'm putting together for people who are brand new to HHO. If you're just getting started in HHO and you decide you want to build yourself a, a system, hopefully this will help you out a bit. Now what I'm going to be going over here is just some of the basic components that you need to get yourself started doing bench testing. I'm not going to go over any kind of electronic devices or things that you need to integrate this into your car. This is strictly a video for people who are interested in getting into HHO and doing some basic bench testing. I'm going to go over the different types of cells and the different components that you need like bubblers, flash ports, flashback arresters, things like that. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so the first component that you're going to need is some kind of a power supply. For the most part, everybody experimenting with HHO runs 12 volt power supplies. Um, you can either take a car battery uh, hooked up to a trickle charger. When I first started, I just used a trickle charger directly. I had a cheapy Harbor Freight 6 amp trickle charger that I used. It worked okay, but I was limited only to 6 amps before the volts would start dropping off. Uh, another good option that I see a lot of people doing out there is modifying power supplies for computers. It works pretty well, but again, you're limited on the amount of amps that you can draw, and you don't think you have any control over the voltage. The route that I ended up going for doing my bench testing was this little unit here. It's by a company called Diamond Antenna. It's a GZV4000, and these power supplies are for ham radios. I bought it at a place called Ham Radio Outlet in Burbank, California. Uh, they also have a website. I guess this is just one of many, chain, uh, many stores in a chain. So if you go to hamradiooutlet.com, there's quite a few 12-volt power supplies out there available, depending on what you want to spend. This one was around $180. I think uh, Diamond, if I remember right, has a 70 amp version that's quite a bit more pricey, probably closer to $350 to $400 range. But there's a bunch of different power supplies that are available out there that uh, allow you to control voltage and amperage like this one does. And that's probably what I would recommend if you want to do some serious bench testing. The next piece that you're going to need is some sort of an HHO cell. Now in a nutshell, there are basically just two types of cells, a wet cell and a dry cell. I'm not going to go into the difference between the two cells right now. I plan on doing a video later that explains the differences between both and the advantages of one over the other. But for right now, let's just say the dry cell is the way to go. And anybody who's serious about HHO today would probably agree with me. The cell that I use, this is the, the, the original EBN dry cell. This particular one here is a 25 plate, and this is a 21 plate cell. Again, not to go into detail on what it is, but basically it's just a whole stack of plates that we're circulating water through with an electrolyte that's causing the electrolysis process and releasing the HHO gas into our water reservoir. Like I said, you're going to need some sort of a cell, whether it's a wet cell or a dry cell, whether you make your own or buy one, that's the main basic component that you're going to need. So you have your power supply and your HHO cell. The next piece you're going to need, especially if you're using a dry cell, is some sort of a water reservoir. The reservoir is nothing more than a tank that's going to hold your electrolyte, which is distilled water and either potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. But either way, it's just some sort of a container to hold the water, and it generally has a drain coming out of the bottom of it somewhere that takes the water, the electrolyte, from the reservoir to let it drain down into your dry cell. It circulates through all the plates, and then the electrolyte and the water circulates back up through another hose and dumps back into your reservoir. Then all the HHO gas kind of rises to the top and out a tube that goes onto your bubbler. Um, most reservoirs aren't going to be big tubes like this. For the most part, you're going to probably want something along these lines. Um, this is from a company called Flambeau. It's spelled F-L-A-M-B-E-A-U. Uh, you look for them online, uh, go to their liquids division, and look for their different multi-purpose tanks. Um, these are really, really sturdy tanks. Probably the, probably the best ones you're going to find out there. I've seen some, some other ones from auto parts stores. They're nowhere near as sturdy as these. Um, the tanks that I buy don't have any kind of connectors in them. I put those in on my own, but you can order them with or without connectors. You have to call them directly to make an order, but definitely look into Flambeau tanks. That's the way to go for your reservoirs. The next piece of the puzzle you'll need is some sort of a bubbler. Now, bubbler basically serves two different functions. The first function is to take the HHO gas coming into it, generally is sent through some sort of a diffusion device, an air stone or something like that. It's going to break it into smaller bubbles. And as those bubbles travel up the column of water inside your bubbler, that helps to filter out 
the sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide vapors, whatever you're using as your catalyst. Um, without going through some sort of water filtration like that, what you generally get is what looks like a white wisp of smoke. If you take your HHO gas at the end of your hose, you'll see a little wisp of smoke coming off. Or it looks kind of like cigarette smoke. For the most part, if your bubbler is set up correctly, then after being diffused and traveling up that column of water, it tends to get rid of most, if not all, of those vapors. Now here's a smaller bubbler that I made a couple years ago out of a 304 stainless steel drinking bottle. But the concept is the same. I have an inlet and an outlet. And on the inlet, I have a hose that goes down inside the bottle. And at the bottom of there is a little centered brass um, filter that breaks up the bubbles into smaller bubbles. They rise to the, to the top up here. There's a little section of, of empty air space up here. And then the HHO gas travels out of the bubbler. Now, one thing you want to make sure that you do for any bubbler that you make, whether it be a big one like this or a small one like this, if you notice, I have these little white, what I call flash ports on here. Now, what these are is it's a protection device in the event that you did have a flashback. In other words, if you had some sort of a flame source that ignited your HHO going out of the bottle, that flame is going to come back into the bottle. Now, that's one of the reasons that you want to have these bubblers is because if it does ignite here, it's going to blow up the HHO that is, developed, that is accumulated in the top of here but because it can't go through all those tiny bubbles and then down through your filter and up and out. It's going to stop the flash right here. But it is going to be, cause quite an explosion inside your bubbler and it's going to need to release that pressure somewhere. This little, what, this, what this flash port does, there's inside of there is a little mouse ball and a spring. And if in the event of an explosion, the pressure just forces that mouse ball up and all the air or the HHO explosion gets vented out of these holes in the flash port. So make sure any, any type of bubbler that you build, you've got to have some sort of a safety relief valve, a pressure relief valve, whether it's one that you make yourself or buy, some sort of a flash port on your bubblers. The final component that you're going to need that I highly recommend, especially if you're going to be building a torch, is some sort of a flashback protector. Now it's okay that you've got flash ports on your bubblers, but it's better to have some sort of flash protection as well. You know, if you can stop the flash from even getting to the bubblers to begin with, all the better. Now, if you're working with smaller volumes of gas, let's say two liters a minute or less, there's a little device that you can buy on eBay for about $8.95. It's by a company called Bruce Energetics, and it's a very simple flashback arrestor. It's made out of plastic. It's basically just two plastic fittings with a couple of air stones in between them covered in a piece of, of, of vinyl tubing. It's very simple. If you want to build your own, you can go ahead and do it. Uh, my thought is for the price, you know, these guys put a lot of time and effort into building these things. For the price and the hassle and tracking down all the parts and building them, I just assume order them from them. Now, if you're going to be running higher volumes of gas, um, I'm not sure the company that makes them. Um, I'm going to be having them available on my website, but they're basically these um, small water filter housings that are filled with a bunch of what looks like green plastic beads. Uh, I don't know exactly how the concept works, but it seemed to do a really good job of stopping high, volume HH, AO, high volumes of gas with HHO flashbacks. I've seen them stop flashbacks over 10 liters a minute of gas with no problem, and it seems to stop them every time. So be sure, especially if you're going to be working with torches, to put some sort of a flashback protector. I highly recommend, like I say, the more volume you're going to be using, the more important it is to use flash protection. So, for all you HHO newbies out there, I hope this video helped explain some of the components that you're going to need to get yourself started. Now, one thing to keep in mind, HHO is a great fuel, it's fun, all that, but it can be extremely dangerous. This stuff is very, very potent and should never, under any circumstance, be stored under pressure. So, do your homework, build your safety devices you need, have a lot of fun, but by all means, be safe. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me through HHO Connection. Take care.